On Monday, I got thrown when I was lecturing, and I gave a lecture that was terrible. I really didn't like it. I went home, I was very upset. I thought, I got distracted and flustered by being distracted, and that meant uh, I missed talking about what the most important things were. And I think in all public speaking and in lecturing and probably in everything in life, the key trick is to make sure you always do the most important thing. And certainly the thing I do as I walk into a lecture every day, uh, whenever I'm about to give a lecture, is I just run through this little mantra in my head, which is, most important things for today's lecture are blah and blah. And I have two important things, and I just have to do those things. If everything else falls by the wayside, I don't care as long as I do the two most important things. But on Monday, I only did one of the two most important things, and I didn't do the other thing, and I was really sad about it. Uh, and, but even worse, when I realized that uh, I wasn't going to get to the other most important thing, I got flustered, and then I made everything worse. And I think this is a general thing that we all face, that when we're solving a problem or working on something and things don't go quite right, we get a bit stressed. And when we're a bit stressed, we're not at our peak, and things get worse. And I even have a rule when I'm playing chess with someone who's good at playing chess. I'm not very good at playing chess. I have a rule that whenever I make a bad move in chess, does anyone here play chess? Yeah, OK, cool. You know you spend hours and hours thinking what move to do, and the other person's going mad. Uh, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And then, if you make a silly mistake, like I do, it's quite devastating to the game. Suddenly, a whole delicate thing that you've been building up can be destroyed. And I find, after making a bad move in chess, it's something I've noticed since I was about eight, it's a habit I have, my next move is always another bad move. And sometimes it's worse. So, in a sense, I'm so flustered by the small mistake I've made that I then make I compound it. I, I at least double it, and sometimes I make it worse. So I have a rule now that whenever I make a mistake in chess or there's a bad move and my heart starts to pound like that, I have to sit on my hands. And I physically do that. I just sit on my hands like this, and I'm not allowed to move. And I think of a move. I think, oh, that's the move I want to do. Oh, I can't do it because I'm sitting on my hands. And I have to sit there for about 60 seconds before I can take my hands out and make a move. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, so uh, now I, I noticed that in the part of the course we're in now, we're in an interesting part. We're about to hit the hump. There's this sort of easy bit where it's all fun and games, and then there's this hard hump, and then it settles back down again. And the hump is when the first assignment's due. And we make it due as early as we can, because I want the hump to happen as soon as possible. Because I want you to encounter the hump, feel the pain of the hump, and then the joy of reaching the other side of the hump. Okay, so you've got task one due, and if you're, not an, ex if you're an experienced programmer, yeah, okay, you've, you've done it, that's all fine. But if you're not an experienced programmer, which is most of the people in the course, you're probably feeling quite anxious and thinking, oh, I don't know how I'll do it. And you're feeling quite stressed. And you think, oh, no, this isn't good. And you're now subject to stress. Now, I hope you're going to use that stress well and think carefully and let it motivate you to spend extra time on it and do extra planning and be very careful in what you do. But I hope you're not going to respond to stress badly, like getting all flustered and forgetting the most important thing or doing a series of dumb things in a row like I'm inclined to do. So I want you to think carefully as you approach task one. I think the hardest thing about task one, if you don't know how to program, isn't the programming. I think the hardest thing about part one is managing your emotions and your mental state. You're going to feel stressed and unhappy and nervous and anxious and all sorts of things trying to make the damn thing work. Experienced programmers are used to that feeling and they know, that's all right, in two days I'll have solved it and then everything will be good. But you don't know that. You're thinking, oh, maybe this will stretch forever. For the rest of my life I'm going to be stressed now. I'm never going to be happy again. So it feels quite overwhelming. So I think the art of programming is this sort of almost like uh, Buddhist-like thing or something like that. It's some sort of notion of being calm, relaxing, taking the stress, riding the stress, but not letting it overcome you. And if things feel too bad, then just take a deep breath and go for a walk or ring a friend or sing a song or do something that makes you happy. It's not the end of the world. It's not the biggest thing in the world. Just do the best you can. That's the trick. So get it in proportion. Don't explode and drop out of the course. Don't fizzle and give up and never turn up again. Instead, just get what you can out of the exercise. Do the best you can. And every time you hit a hump, they'll be smaller. There'll be another small hump for task two. And then there'll be a tiny hump for the project. And then the final exam, well, you won't even notice it. <laughs> but really, this is the hardest one. Even though the amusing thing is, by the time you get to week seven or eight, you'll look back at this assignment and you'll, <laughs> they, people always do it. They look back and they say, that assignment was so easy. Man, you should have had a harder assignment. 
They forget what it was like before they did it. And I was just speaking to a girl then, and it reminded me, when she was talking about this, of when I went abseiling for the first time, I was looking over the edge, and you know you have to keep your body rigid, which I was doing quite well at that time, and lean out backwards over the edge with the rope, and the guy's going, lean out further, and I'm going, not leaning further. And he's going, lean out further, and I'm looking down, it's so far down, it was very scary. And then I finally went over the edge. And it was exhilarating. And I got to the bottom and thought, I'm so brave. I've just absolved the biggest, tallest, scariest cliff in the world. And I looked up and it was just like there. There was nothing. <laughs> I thought, oh, no. And abseiling's always like that. Looking down, it looks incredible. Looking up, it looks like nothing. So at the other side of the task, you just won't, you know, it won't even seem so significant. But I'll know you've done a really significant thing, and you will too. So don't give up. Persevere. Do the best you can. That's the trick. Um, uni's going to be like that repeatedly, and it's really good if you get the mental skills now for dealing with these sort of stresses. Don't let them kill you. Don't be brittle. Just bend in the wind. Do the best you can. Manage your mind. Okay, now, what we're going to do... Uh, the, oh, thank you very much. Do you see what I mean? Yes, I do. Um, it's actually a programming issue. Uh, uh, and I've just spoken to this yeah. about programming. Yeah. And uh, this, it's going to be take a few days to Oh, that's fine. Resolve. That's fine. Um, and we're not back in here till next Monday, so from our point of view, is it likely yeah. to be okay Hopefully, for next Monday? Yeah, cool, I'll, I'll thank you. All right. Um, we thought we might be able to actually... Do you use those panels here, instead? Yeah, I tried that. Okay. okay, thank you for coming down and checking that. Uh, it's just, um, I finally stopped procrastinating and called up the tech support people about these lights that aren't working. It's taken me three weeks to do it. Do you guys find you're procrastinating a lot at the moment? The uni's starting to take off, everything's quite easy, you've got these deadlines, they're a fair way in the future, you don't have to worry about them. It's okay if you do nothing so you procrastinate. I find I'm doing that with my book. You know my New Year's resolution was to write a book? Do you know how much writing I've done since I made that resolution? I wrote, yeah, this year, that's right. I wrote two pages. I was going to write a page every day. By now I'd have written a, like, what, 100 pages or something. Why am I procrastinating? Why aren't I able to write the book? It's not that hard. I go for a two or three hour walk every morning. I sit down in a beautiful park with my pencil and paper. I'm quite calm and ready to write my book, but instead I do other stuff. Why do I procrastinate? Because really, probably the most important thing for me this year, if I had to write most important things, is the book. But I'm doing less important things with that pencil. Why is that? Why do you think? What can I do to make sure I write my book? Write it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start blogging about my problems with writing my book. I want you guys to be doing the same with your programming. I reckon to program, you need to practice about three hours a week. If you can't program, you probably need to practice a bit more than that, which means by now, at the end of the third week, you should have all practiced at least 10 hours. And next week, it'll be 12, and the week after, it'll be 15. And I reckon a lot of you are in procrastination mode. I know a lot of people haven't even created an account till the end of week two. You know, so... <laughs> I understand that completely, I'm with you, but that's not going to be a successful strategy. So what you've got to do is work out how to deal with your own procrastination. Somehow make yourself want to do things and get started early. Certainly for the assignment, the time to start it is today, if you're an inexperienced programmer. Um, and I will, in the last lecture today, actually start doing the assignment with you a little bit to give you some tips so you know how to get started. And then I want you to work on it a little bit every day. Don't leave it till the end. I want you to develop good work habits and good time management, and that is work on it a bit every day until it's due. You've got to, you'll have a week. You won't need a week, though you'll, it'll feel like it. But if you leave it till the last day before it's hand, due in, you'll get stressed. You'll spend hundreds of hours unproductively getting stressed and burning out, and it won't work. Do a little bit every day. It'll be easy peasy. OK, so that's really all I wanted to say. Um, oh, no. And the last thing I wanted to say on Monday that I didn't say, and I was upset at myself for not saying it, was I just wanted to say something about Japan. You know that tsunami in Japan? I'd been watching it on Friday while it was happening, and it was the most... It reminded me of when I was watching 9-11. I was watching it early one morning when Gwen was a baby, and I was watching it happen live on TV, and I saw it from about after the first plane had hit, but before the second plane had hit. And I just was going, watching it. And while I was watching, the second plane hit, and I actually started to cry, and I had to turn off the TV. It was the saddest thing I'd ever seen. And I saw the same thing happening in Japan. And so uh, I just sort of I thought we should somehow acknowledge that an incredibly sad thing has happened. Um, and the, the interesting thing um, about the whole exercise was I did see, before the tsunami hit, I saw some footage of the buildings during this quake. Did anyone see that, the, the skyscrapers? Some of them were rocking for like half an hour. You saw it? And I thought, this is why I'm an engineer. This is why you guys are engineers. The biggest earthquake to ever hit Japan, I, I think, is that right? Because the buildings were so well made and so well designed. 
clever engineers like you guys had sat down and thought, how can we make a building so if there's an earthquake, because Japan's prone to earthquakes, it won't fall down. They'd thought of hundreds of different solutions, just like you did with stacking toast in the lecture theatre. They'd thought of lots of things, they'd tried lots of things out, and they worked magnificently. And if we'd lived in the days before engineers when people just threw things together, well, there would have been a terrible toll from that, that part of the disaster. So, um, uh, so well done on the path you've taken towards being an engineer, even if you don't have the word engineer in your degree. By doing this course and learning how to program, you are being an engineer, you are being a problem solver. And that's an awesome skill to have, and it will make the world much better. Though the engineers that built those buildings are probably the unsung heroes. No one's going to give them medals later on afterwards, but by their actions, they've saved you know, countless thousands of lives.